Hi Randalls, thank you very much for being here with me. Hi David, glad to be here. Randall Kuhne, you work with Technalia. Technalia does absolutely everything from energy to robotics to healthcare. And what we do here is specifically that we do um, research for uh, geron technology, that's uh, technologies helping the elderly, uh, biorobotics, and neuroengineering. And I'm the director of the Department of Neuroengineering here. As I understand, you have a specific research project that is very close to your heart. Tell us about whole brain emulation. Okay, whole brain emulation is the term that I coined about 11 years ago for the process of reconstructing the functions of a brain by reconstructing the neuroanatomy in high resolution and also reconstructing the functions of each component of that brain. And then you emulate it on some other system, perhaps a computer, perhaps something else. What progress has been made since the time you coined the term? Progress has been made both on the side of the structure, so extracting the neuroanatomy, as well as on the side of getting to the function, though the function is suffering from more problems at the moment than the structure approach. In the area of structure, so getting the neuroanatomy out of a brain, there are a number of uh, high-profile uh, research projects going on, both out of, uh, uh, out of Henry Markram's laboratory in Lausanne, for example, where they're working on the Blue Brain project, as well as Giorgio Ascoli and several others. These people are trying to create uh, connectomes, so the, the representations of the connections in the brain uh, as they would be in any general human brain. So this is a general connectome, a construct. Whereas, for example, projects, the knife edge scanning microscope and the automated tape collecting lathe ultra microtome, which comes out of Harvard, uh, these two projects are projects that have developed automated machines that can slice a plastified brain very thinly and obtain the high resolution structure from that brain, from that specific brain. So this is a reconstruction in that case, and that's very close to what whole brain emulation is looking for. Then on the other side, we have the neural interfacing, so having to be able to get the function out of the brain rather than just the structure. And that's more difficult right now because the type of neural interfacing that's been so far, been done so far by putting basically small electrodes into the brain, uh, suffers from many problems. On the one hand, it's very low bandwidth. You cannot access very many neurons using that technology. It has the problem that chronic implantation can be very difficult. The surgery itself is dangerous and scary. And there are many other issues with that. So it's it's. Uh, that hasn't progressed as far, but there are some very new approaches that are just over the horizon that don't use the same technology, and there are great hopes that that will Let's help. assume that you achieve whole brain emulation. Do you then expect a mind to emerge from it? If you were to emulate all the structure and function of the brain, then indeed, I believe, if you can reactivate that function in another substrate, let's say a fantastic computer, then I think indeed that brain, that reconstructed emulated brain, would think as we do. So then you have a mind in this new substrate. There are people who believe uh, that the sensorial experiences of uh, the entire body are yeah. necessary for creating the mind that we all share as humans. Whole brain emulation should then become a whole body emulation, shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. There is a very good point there. In fact, I'm quite close to some of the people in the embodied cognition uh, uh, community, which is what you're referring to here. Uh, one of the researchers in my department has just spent six months working at Rolf Pfeiffer's lab. And Rolf Pfeiffer is one of the people who believes that we can only really understand how intelligence works and how we could make artificial intelligence for robotics if we take into account the body issues. Now, I believe that's true, and I believe that practically no one that you speak to uh, among those who would like to achieve whole brain emulation would say, let's cut off all perception and all body function and just have the brain in a box. I don't think you're going to find a lot of people who want that. So what you would need at least is to have perception. 
and then to be able to create this feedback loop between what you perceive and how you act on it. Once you have the whole brain, it would be subject to technological evolution with a potentially much higher speed. Well, you're right. Once you put a brain into a different substrate, it's not going to be governed by the same rules of evolution. Now, this doesn't mean that it's not subject to natural selection or to the pressures of competition, because I believe that those are very universal. Those go beyond even the biological. You can see those in physical systems as well. So what you have then is something that is evolving, but differently. And I believe that it would be very interesting to see where that goes. What is the timeline and what are the resources required to achieve the goal of whole brain emulation? I don't at the moment see any particular project that would be required or necessary to achieve whole brain emulation, which in itself would take an enormously long amount of time. So it really comes down to how much support do you have, how much work can be done in parallel, how much can you get from the science community that happens to be doing a lot of what's necessary for this project, and how much do you need to do one at a time or slowly as you receive funding and support. Those two are very closely related. You go to bed knowingly that uh, the morning after there would be a whole brain emulated, and it happens, mm -hmm. given the techniques that are available at the time, that the whole brain emulated waking up the morning after would be yours. And regardless of uh, your biological brain uh, going ahead and functioning or not, there would be an eye, if mm -hmm. what we said before is true, that would be in that whole brain waking up in the morning. That is you. What's yes. your reaction? Yeah. Well, I would hope that if I awaken as a whole brain emulation, that it's not a brain in a box, but rather something that has perception and action. So I would go about trying to lead my life the way that I can, given the kinds of actions that, are, that I'm capable of taking. What you are implying is that it is a very important part of uh, those uh, people's responsibilities who are trying and achieve this to make sure that before they turn on the emulated brain, they understand what would be an ethically acceptable environment for the brain to live in. Absolutely. Absolutely. The ethics of it, these are very important. Um, and this goes way beyond whole brain emulation. Whole brain emulation is only one, one project direction in which we think of creating something that is like a brain that can think and have a personality but that is not inside a biological body. There are many other projects. There's artificial intelligence, and there's the constructs that they're trying to make as well, like I was just telling you. So if you take all of these different possibilities, any time you end up with something that is conscious, then you have an ethical responsibility towards it. Let's finish by saying that uh, it is our mutual hope, and with many other people hopefully sharing this hope, that as uh, you are achieving your objectives and other teams too, in parallel, uh, the ethicists and uh, groups uh, who care about this will work so that any of us waking up as an emulated brain will have fun and we will feel fine. Very much so, yes. Thank you. Thank you.